Hey everybody, how's it going? Sorry if you've been following my channel and I've been a little bit inactive lately. I actually spent the last couple months going through and getting my OSCP certification. So that was a ton of fun. It was an awesome experience. The labs were amazing. I was able to learn a lot and had a really good time doing it. I actually have a little write-up I did about my OSCP experience as well as some useful advice for those of you looking to go for your OSCP. So I'll drop a link to that down below in the description. But without further ado, let's dive into today's topic which is going to be privilege escalation on a Linux system using kernel exploits. Now, this video is not going to be an in-depth of how the Linux kernel works, operates, or how these kernel exploits work. This is going to be the basics of finding and using kernel exploits. So nothing in-depth. You don't need to be a programmer or understand much about the kernel to be able to find these and utilize them. Now the first step in this process is enumeration. As always, enumeration is key. So we can find out some system information um, if we had a shell on a machine and we type in uh, uname space dash a. Now that's going to print out some system information here. Now what we're gonna look for here is the kernel version, which we can identify right here, as well as the CPU architecture. Now if we look over here, we see x86 underscore 64. Now this means that this is a 64-bit system. If we just saw x86 here, it would mean it's a 32-bit system. Now this is important to note for when we're compiling C code later on. Now I should also mention that the scenario we're gonna be playing out here is that the shell we have right now is just an average user on a machine and we're gonna to try to get to root using a kernel exploit. So we've identified the Linux kernel version, which we can see right here, and our CPU architecture, which is 64-bit. So the next step would be to just, you know, do some generic Googling and look up, you know, this kernel version for Linux and an exploit. Now I happen to have already identified one, which you can pull up here. You can see this applies to all Linux kernels in 4.4.x. So uh, we're running Ubuntu 16.04 version 1. I'll drop a link below to the ISO for that if you would like to go ahead and try this out on your own. So. Uh, this exploit, you know, there's a nice little description here of how it works and all the in-depth stuff if you're interested in reading about that. But we're not going to be talking about that here in this video. So if we scroll down all the way to the bottom of this page, there is uh, this link here for an exploit DB mirror. So what I did is I went ahead and downloaded that zip file, which we now have available in our downloads. So if we just go into our downloads folder we will see that we have the zip file there. So I'll just go ahead and unzip that. Perfect. So there are some instructions on the exploit DB page. Uh, let's see in the background here, they have a script to compile the kernel exploit and the script to run the exploit. Now, it looks like after we run the exploit, we should go ahead and get a, a root shell locally. So this is a local privilege escalation, meaning that it's going to affect the current shell that we have. There's no need to spawn a reverse shell or anything like that. So this brings up a good point. So if you notice, the first thing that we have to do is use this compile script. Now, typically all kernel exploits, you're gonna need GCC on the box. So if we type in which GCC, we can see that GCC is for sure installed. And now this can be a good hint when you're going through hack the box or OSCP machines. If you see that GCC is on the box, it might be there for a reason. The, the kernel might be vulnerable to a kernel exploit or something that, you know, some sort of exploit which requires you to compile C code on the box. So that's just something to, to look for and keep an eye out for. It can be a nice little hint. But all right, let's take a look at running this exploit. So we'll go into the directory where it is housed. We will untar this. Oh, sorry about that. Forget my tar commands, no worries. All right, so now if we go into this directory here, let's take a look at what we've got. So we've got these three different C files and a bash compile script. So uh, let's take a look at the compile script in here. So we can see that this is running GCC uh, on these different C files and passing arguments to them, so on and so forth. Now. This is where you would have to know if you had a 64-bit or 32-bit system. So there is a flag, I believe it's the M flag, where you can say dash, G, you know, GCC dash M32. So this would be useful if you're compiling the exploit. 
say on your attacker machine and your attacker machine is a 64-bit system but you're targeting a 32-bit system you need to make sure you compile it with this dash m32 flag to make sure that you're compiling in 32-bit mode so the exploit will actually run on the system you're trying to exploit but now let's go ahead and try to run this compile script all right now after that's run we can see that we have all these executable files one per C file that we had. So it went through and compiled each of these C files and gave us an executable. Now we can see that the next instruction here in exploit DB tells us to run this double put command and we should get a root shell. So let's clear this and we'll run the double put executable that we just compiled. And this could take about a minute to run so I will cut to once the exploit finishes running. All right, and now we're back in the exploit finished running. So you can see it, it says we have root privs now, and our shell has automatically been upgraded to a root shell. So even if we type in, who am I? Root. So we've used that to go from a standard user to the root user using a kernel exploit, which is really cool. And so we can go ahead and um, you know type in exit. We'll get back to our regular user shell. We can see we're just our standard user here again. Um, and we can run that double put executable again it doesn't take nearly as long now and we are root it only took about an uh, uh sorry a minute before which isn't too bad but i didn't want to bore you with that waiting time but that is the basics of how to identify your cpu architecture as well as your linux kernel version looking up the kernel version and exploits on exploit db downloading those exploits typically c code compiling them and then running them in order to get a root shell. Now again, there is a lot more in depth that you could go into learning about how the kernel operates and how these exploits work and take advantage of different things. But for the extent of knowledge you would need to use these on Hack the Box or OSCP, this is pretty much as in depth as you would need to go. A lot of these kernel exploits come with the exact instructions on how to compile them and use them in the exploit DB page.